chapter 2, Mishnah 4. The Mishnah now gives examples of the rule stated at the end of the previous Mishnah that a korban becomes pigol only if its blood, the permitter, has been offered as required. It begins by giving examples of pigol intentions in which the permitter is considered to have been offered as required. There are three cases of this. In what manner is the permitter considered to have been offered as required? 1. If he slaughtered in silence, i.e. without any invalidating intention, and then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbeach, and threw it with the intention of eating its meat or burning its immorn past its time. 2. Or he slaughtered it with the intention of eating its meat or burning its immorn past its time, and then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbeach, and threw it in silence, without any invalidating intention. 3. Or he slaughtered the korban, received its blood, brought it to the Mizbeach, and threw it, all of them with the intention of eating its meat or burning its immorn past its time. This is a case in which the permitter has been offered as required. Since in all of these cases the blood avodos were completed without any invalidating intention other than pigol, the law of pigol takes effect. The Mishnah now gives a list of six examples in which the permitter is not considered to have been offered as required because there were other invalidating intentions as well. There are two kinds of intentions that invalidate a korban besides pigol. The intention to eat the meat or burn the amurin outside its place and the intention to offer a Pesach or Chatas for the sake of another offering, Shelo Lishma. The Mishnah gives examples of both. It begins with three cases in which an outside-the-place intention was involved. In what manner is the permitter not considered to have been offered as required? 1. If he slaughtered with the intention of eating the meat or burning the Amurin outside its place, and then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbech, and threw it with the intention of eating the meat or burning the Amurin past its time. 2. Or he slaughtered it with the intention of eating the meat or burning the Amorin past its time, and then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbech, and threw it with the intention of eating the meat or burning the Amorin outside its place. 3. Or he slaughtered the Korban or received its blood or brought it to the Mizbech, or threw it with the intention of eating its meat or burning its Amorin outside its place, while he did all others with past the time pickle intentions. While he did all the others with past the time pickle intentions. The law for the previous case the previous three cases will be given below. The Mishnah first gives three cases in which a not-for-its-own-sake intention was involved along with the pickle intention. 4. Or he slaughtered a Pesach or Chatas offering not for its own sake but for the sake of a different korban, which invalidates it. And then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbeach, and threw it with the intention of eating its meat or burning its immorn past its time. 5. Or he slaughtered the Pesach or Chatas with the intention of eating its meat or burning its immorn past its time. And then he received the blood, brought it to the Mizbeach, and threw it not for its own sake, but for the sake of a different korban. 6. Or he slaughtered the Pesach or Chatas, or received its blood, or brought it to the Mizbeach, or threw its blood not for its own sake, but for the sake of a different korban. The Mishnah concludes, This is a case in which the permitter was not offered as required. In all of these cases, since he did at least one avodah with an invalidating intention other than pigol, the blood, the permitter, was not offered as required, and the pickle classification therefore does not take effect.